Hello, welcome to our today's lesson, Introduction to Information Communication Technology. I'm your presenter, I'm Mr. Kalora Richard. When you speak of uh, information communication technology, we are going to introduce ourselves to computers. And uh, the first thing you shall learn is uh, the definition of a computer and say it's an electronic device that processes a user input which we call it uh, data to the desired output also known as the information in this case we have uh, three main terms the process data and uh, information the process data and information when you speak of data these are the raw facts the raw facts uh, that you enter into the computer and in this case they can be figures of uh, of a certain organization which uh, include things like uh, uh, numbers symbols and uh, alphabets processing will refer to the way in which the data is manipulated into information in this case shall have the logic and also the uh, the comparison that is a uh, can have uh, addition subtraction multiplication all this being under the arithmetic then logic the comparison whether the greater than less than etc information is the finished data after processing which is accurate summarized in the manner that the user can use it for making decision and also for planning purposes what are the advantages of computer? The advantages of computer you have a fast to automate tasks that can be done manually like, such as uh, calculations. A computer makes work easier. Number three, computers are accurate as compared to human labor. Uh, computers are also portable such as uh, laptops. You can say that they can be used in education purposes e.g. computer-aided learning, computer-aided instruction. Computers can store a large amount of data. Remember that computers internal storage. It also, you can also have uh, the external storage where you can uh, have external hard disks, other removable devices such as uh, flash disks, and also the CD or the DVD. You can also store your data in that place. When you continue with the advantages, you can say that computers can also do tasks that are done manually. They can, that is, a, they can be used for security purposes, CD for the CCTV. Can also do tasks, variety of tasks. That is, a computer can be typing. The same case, downloading. The same case, you are listening to music. That is, can mount task. Number nine, we say that a computer can be used for communication purposes, CG, sending of emails, sending of uh, memos, etc. That is, a computer can be used to communicate from one person to another. And in that, as advantages, uh, we'll also have uh, disadvantages. And disadvantage, all some of the disadvantages of a computer is that it can lead to unemployment, as a uh, most work done by human can be done by a computer. That is, where several people can work, a computer can work by itself. Another disadvantage is that can only be used by literate people. This is why most of the uh, cases you see people learning, uh, running up and down to study computers so that they can be able to be literate and use the computers. Computers can be can lead to immorality in case of the uh, use of media which has uh, access to pornography and uh, what a few. So when you can access uh, the media which is uh, not uh, right for students or for young people can lead to immoral cases. Breakages of computers can also lead to data loss where if you had not backed up your data, it can be lost. It is also prone co to computer virus, which can infect your data and lead to the data loss. 
other disadvantages include they can damage your eyesight computers can damage your eyesight due to radiation and also you can say that they require power to operate meaning that if you are in remote places where electricity or you do not have access to power you may not be able to operate your computer it is also expensive to buy and maintain a computer sometimes you can also say that computers lead to laziness because most of the time you will spend most of your work in computer that is a uh, while operating the computer the physical parts of a computer which are the physical parts of a computer and you say a desktop computer is basically made up of system unit and other devices connected to the system unit and these devices that are connected to the system unit we call them the peripheral devices so we have an example of a computer that you can see a system unit and all the other devices are connected to that system unit where we have uh, the screen or the monitor being connected to the system unit we have the keyboard mouse we have the microphone we also have uh, the speakers all these are connected to the system unit so we refer to them as the peripheral devices if you ask an example of a peripheral device we have the monitor speakers keyboard mouse microphones printers all these are examples of uh, peripheral devices the system unit system unit is a part of computer that houses the brain of the computer and the brain of the computer you also call it the cpu or the central processing unit the system unit also houses other devices we call them the drives and drives are used to store record and also read data you have two types of system units you have the tower type and the desktop as you can see the difference the, between the tower type and the, the desktop so in this case the the images are, are uh, misplaced the tower type is the one below and the system the desktop is the one above so in this case i have to re adjust them in this format so this is the tower type this is the type and the other one the desktop these are the two types of system units the peripheral devices they say these are devices that are connected to the system unit using special cables and these special cables we call them the interface cables and they receive they transmit data and information in that is to and from the devices they transmit data and information to and the and from the devices and these are the interface cables the cables are attached to the system unit through connectors and these connectors we call them the ports so the peripheral devices include things like the monitor so examples of peripheral devices you have the monitor on the screen you have the keyboard you have the mouse we have an example of a keyboard and mouse in this case we have a keyboard and mouse the keyboard is a peripheral device that enables the user to enter data and instruction to the computer through dialing you have to dial the keys for you to enter information or to enter instructions into the computer a mouse is a pointing device that enables the user to execute commands and it is used to control an arrow that is displayed on the screen so in order to execute the command you have to move the mouse which consequently will move the pointer on the screen and then the mouse will have the button that for you to execute the command you have to click on the buttons we shall come to most of the mouse cues as we continue the monitor is also called this, this, uh, the screen so we refer to it as a monitor because it will enable you to monitor whatever is going on into the computer and in this case it is the tv like uh, device that is used to display the information we have an example of monitor there you can see how it looks so it is not a tv it's a monitor in computer terms 
classification of computers we have three classification of computers we have, we have the classification according to viscosite we also have the classification according to purpose and the classification according to functionality when it comes to classification according to viscosite we have the supercomputers and they are the fastest they are the largest they are the most expensive and also the most powerful computers and they can they can do all perform complex instructions within a fraction of a second and because of their weight supercomputers are kept in a special room and they also emit a large volume of uh, heat and they are used for scientific research which requires enormous calculations we have an example of a supercomputer in this case you can see with their size they cannot be they have to be stored in their own room and also because of the heat they generate not uh, good for human we have the mainframe computers they are less powerful and less expensive than supercomputers and they are used to perform data that is processed data and instructions that are mathematically based on mathematical calculations they handle all kinds of problems whether scientific or commercial and they are mostly found in government agencies such as being organizations, companies and uh, banks, op stores, airports, etc. We have an example of a <coughs> mainframe computer. We have the main computers. A main computer resembles the mainframe computer but it's uh, slightly smaller and in this case we saw we call it a small scale mainframe computer and it was developed as a cheap alternative of the mainframe computers. And in this case, it can be used in scientific laboratories, research institutions, and engineering plants, and places where processing automation is required. And they are adapted for functioning functions such as accounting, word processing, and database management. The microcomputers they are the smallest, they are the cheapest, and relatively less powerful. And in this case, they use a microprocessor, which is relatively small compared to the supercomputers, mainframe, and also the main computers. They are mostly used in training and learning institutions, small business enterprises, and communication centers, among other places. We have an example of microcomputer. See, these are examples like the one we have in our labs, in our learning institutions, in our uh, places uh, the business such as uh, where the supermarket these are the type of computers we use examples of desktop computers we have uh, the the desktop which is designed to be placed on a, on top of an office desk we have the notepad or the laptop and it is a uh, personal convenient for mobile users it's uh, it's portable and it's also convenient for people who move from one place to another i think you have uh, in most cases you have we come across laptops and uh, desktop computers. Then you have the PDS of the personal digital assistants and they are small enough to fit in the pocket and in this case this is where mobile phones lie. Then you have classification according to purpose. Computers are classified according to purpose to do the tasks they perform either general or specific purpose computers. And the general purpose computers are designed to to be able to perform variety of tasks when loaded with appropriate programs and the most common type of computers used today and in this case when you speak when when you speak of appropriate programs let's say you have uh, installed your computer with the programs from browsing you can be able to browse you can also be able to write memos using word process you can also be able to perform calculation using uh, uh, accounting packages etc so they can be able to perform variety of tasks provided they are uh, they are loaded with the appropriate programs and their flexibility enable them to be applied on a wide range of applications such as document processing performing calculations etc and this computer when you speak of special purpose computers we say that Special purpose computers are designed to serve a specific purpose or accomplish a specific task. And such 
computers can perform no other task except except the one they are meant to examples you have a robots examples you have robots which are used in manufacturing industries mobile phones for communication only electronic calculators for calculations only and since special purpose computers are dedicated to a single task they perform the task quickly and very efficiently then you have classification according to functionality and these computers are classified into three into this uh, that is into three according to the type of data they process that is they can either be discrete or continuous or both and in this case we have the digital computers which process data it is discrete in nature and these are in form of a square wave then we have analog computers which uh, they process data in continuous nature which are not discrete in nature and they are also known as a continuous data and they are in continuous wave form then we have also other computers according to classification about functionality of the hybrid computers which use both continuous and uh, and uh, non-continuous data and we call them the hybrid and an example is a watch a watch use both continuous and non-continuous data which that is discrete and non-discrete data areas where computers are used They are used in supermarkets to keep stock, what is sold out, what is in stock, and what is out of stock. And in this case, the management can use it for reordering. Computers are also used in offices, and that is, uh, computers have increased efficiency in offices by reducing time, effort needed to access and receive information. We also use computers in banks for cash dispensing machines such as uh, ATMs or the automated teller machines and the import automation of cash deposit and also withdraw services. We use computers in industries whereby they can be used to control computer controlled devices or remote controlled devices called the robots. And a robot is a machine that works like a human being but performs tasks that are too unpleasant, dangerous or complex and in this case they can also be dangerous to ascend to a human being in hospitals computers are used to keep patients records in order you can also and i think you have uh, all of you all all of us have been able to, to attend a certain hospital and you can see how patient records are kept and all the diagnosis uh, the diagnosis history are kept using using a computer in transport computers are used to monitor vehicle traffic in busy towns and also in aircraft navigation and in making reservations when it comes to communication we integrate all the computers and telecommunication facilities as main messaging transmission and reception very fast and efficient because of this the world has also been told is said to be global where you can be able to receive and send messages all over the world and in this case it has meant uh, transmission of these messages or communication very fast and efficient in law enforcement you say where computers are used to store information of uh, of uh, people such as uh, through fingerprints images and other identification details and this help In education, computers are used in teaching and learning processing, where learning and teaching are used. That is where learning and uh, teaching using computers is referred to as uh, computer aided learning and computer aided instruction. That's the way we are using the computer nowadays to learn. When it comes to domestic and entertainment, computers are used for home 
for recreational activities such as watching movies, playing music and computer games and they can also be used to store personal information, calculating and also keeping home budget. In library science, computerized library, a computer enables library personnel to easily access and keep updated records of books and other library materials and also through the use of electronic catalog. We have the history of computers and the history of computers are given in generations of the first, second, third and fourth generation. The first generation computers were very large. It is admitted that they could uh, occupy a, a quarter an acre. They are used. They used uh, electronic gadgets, which we call them the vacuum tubes, and uh, they consumed a lot of. They consumed a lot of heat. That is, they consumed a lot of power and emitted a lot of heat. And in this case, they constantly broke down. Examples are the electronic numeric integrator and calculator, and also the electronic disk repairable automatic computer, the ENIAC and the EDVAC. The second generation computers, they operated using solid state devices called transistors, and transistors were much smaller than virtual tubes, and they produced less heat. They were also smaller in size and reliable than those made of vacuum tubes. So in this case, as we continue the generation, it's also good to note the technology that the generations used. For example, the first generation you said they used vacuum tubes. The second generation used the, the solid state devices called transistors. In this case, be able to compare the first, second, third and fourth generation as when it comes to the technology used and also the size of the computers. The third generation computers, they used electronic devices called integrated circuits and the ACs consist of thousands of small transistors which, which are attached to a, on a semiconductor silicon cord that is a semiconductor called silicon chip and the limited less heat and they are much smaller and in this case where the first microprocessor was made. The fourth generation computers they used the, the, the silicon chips were improved by compressing more tiny circuits and transistors to a very small smaller space and in this case they were they sent that is they were designed to produce Land scale integrated circuits and very land scale integrated circuits, and they are used in the innovation and technological improvement of brain of the computer or the microprocessor. They produce less heat and they were smaller in size, and they were easier to use and maintain. The fifth generation, which is uh, the generation that falls into the today's computer, they have a very high processing power and speed that than their predecessors all the, the, that is than the, the previous computers and in this case we say the computers have special instruction sets that allow them to support complex programs that mimic human intelligence or what we call artificial intelligence and the characteristics that they use in artificial intelligence they have internet connectivity they use uh, superior hardware and software they are very small in size and uh, this marks the end of our today's lesson the next lesson we shall be able to see the introduction to computers and in this case we shall be able to see how we can be able to uh, to classify the 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 computer system and also the the hardware and the software classifications Thank you for listening to my lesson.